We are tracking Ian and taking advantage of our SkyCam network in Florida. This is Clearwater Beach. You see the camera shaking right here. You can make out with the sand, the sand blowing out to sea. So this tells you we're on the north side of Ian right now, and it is a different story on the south side. I just don't have any working cameras to show you right now. Look at that big blow up of some storms just south of Sarasota right there. This is an intense storm. Fort Myers surrounding areas on that south side of the storm and east side of the storm. Storm surge values as high as 16 feet in some locations. This wind uh, up around 150 miles per hour at landfall. That's about six or seven miles per hour shy of a cat five. Uh, right now, anywhere from Tampa to Fort Myers getting the worst of it. Uh, Orlando next in line as far as major cities are concerned. It's going to move right across Central Florida as we go through tonight into tomorrow. Latest track here on Ian and advisory. Uh, 145 mile per hour sustained winds. It's a powerful cat four set to weaken to a cat three later tonight by eight o'clock. Winds are at 120 miles per hour. Then it's over land long enough that it's becoming to be a tropical storm. Winds are at 70 miles per hour. Then it's back out over water. And this is the big question is how much energy does it lose with the wind shear as this is kind of picking up and encountering some land. It looks like it doesn't lose a lot of energy here with it as it makes a second landfall at Hilton Head Island. Some of our models are showing this could be a low end cat one hurricane as it makes landfall in Hilton Head or Charleston. So this is something to watch. Of course, storm surge concerns on the east side. Hilton Head, very low elevation. So is Charleston, Isle of Palms, Folly Beach. So those areas could have uh, places that are underwater. A three to six foot storm surge, the latest guidance I've seen, and we will begin to get impacts uh, thereafter. Now the exact track is not set in stone. Yet. We need to watch this closely. The farther east this goes would kind of dampen some of our impacts, but nonetheless rain and heavy rain looks to be on the way. Most of our models take it right up the Savannah River, if not right over Columbia as it makes its way toward us. Some of the newer high res models take it on the eastern edge of this cone of possibility, so we need to watch it. Simply put, if the farther east it is, the lower our impacts, but the way it stands right now, most of our computer models and the National Hurricane Center track has it right through our area. So I've tweaked the timing a little bit Friday morning. We've got medium impacts, but it's on the way anytime after lunch on Friday's fair game for strong winds and heavy rainfall that continues through Saturday morning with high impacts by Saturday evening. It's still an impactful storm, but it's coming down a bit. So Friday waves of heavy rainfall begin. Uh, wind gusts could approach 35 to 50 miles per hour. There's also a low end severe weather risk as this thing makes its way toward the north. Saturday heaviest rain will be in the morning. After that, we've got on and off rain by the afternoon going into the evening. Wind gusts around 20 to 30 miles per hour. Latest computer model shows this thing could approach 70 mile per hour winds as it gets close to Hilton Head and Charleston on Friday. For us here at home, look at those gusts around 40 miles per hour. Then comes the rain Friday afternoon, Friday evening, widespread across the area. Now remember, there's the core over Orangeburg and Augusta. If you were to move this 60 miles east, it would also take the heaviest rain and move it east a bit. So that's why the key is crucial to our direct impacts. Either way you slice it, it looks like we're in the heaviest rain all the way through Saturday morning. When it's all said and done, two to four inches, a good average across the area with some areas closer to five. The all important Clemson NC State game watching that closely. It looks like rain heavier in the morning, but as we get into the afternoon hours, say noon and beyond that rain still with us, but it's slacking up. In fact, by five o'clock, we may have some breaks in the rain, so a game day may not be as in jeopardy, especially late in the day at kickoff at seven o'clock. We'll keep watching it for you. A top 10 matchup right there. We're in the upper 60s across the area. That wind kicks in tonight. 20 mile per hour sustained winds gusting higher than that by tomorrow morning. It's a chilly start to the day in the 30s in the mountains. And by tomorrow, we've got 70s with those wind gusts up around 30 miles per hour. It's a breezy day, but dry 71. Alert days begin for Friday and Saturday as heavy rainfall moves in from Ian and heavy uh, strong winds as well. By Sunday, this is breaking up a bit. We'll see a high of 69. We're in the 70s going into early next week. Western North Carolina, same story, just a bit cooler. 60s with uh, track in the tropics impacts coming our way Friday and Saturday.